Okay, so post fertilization hormones. Just bit that up a bit. So post fertilization hormones. So the um, we need to know three of them. HCG, and I think you should know what it stands for, which is human chorionic gonadotrophin. We've got oxytocin and we've got prolactin. So, uh, some of these are released by the mother and one of these is released by the developing fetus. So the source of this is the, um, I suppose, the probably the trophoblast, to be honest. But anyway, it's from the uh, embryo. So as soon as the embryo is formed and it's implanted, possibly even before that, it starts to churn out this hormone. And what this hormone does is it maintains the corpus luteum. So you'll remember from the hormones, the lovely hormone graph video, that in the luteal phase, the corpus luteum is churning out estrogen and progesterone, both of those hormones maintaining the lining. Usually the corpus luteum degenerates and causes menstruation because it stops producing the hormones. All this does is make sure that corpus luteum carries on to churn out progesterone and oestrogen. And they just keep doing their thing. They keep inhibiting FSH and LH and progesterone keeps suppressing contractions of the uterus. So they're sort of in charge of maintaining um, the lining of the uterus. And eventually the function of, main of churning out these two is taken over by the placenta. So when the placenta forms, it will chuck out those two hormones. Uh, you do still get human chorionic gonadotrophin circulating around the system all the way through pregnancy, which is how you can still use a pregnancy test. Uh, sort of halfway through a pregnancy, it will sh still show positive because this is the hormone that is detected in a, it's the basis of pregnancy testing kits. So, <coughs> towards the end of the pregnancy, what uh, needs to happen is that the foetus needs to exit the building, and that's kind of under the control of oxytocin, and oxytocin causes contractions. I'm just going to put in brackets there, and milk glands. So, it's usually inhibited by progesterone. So again, here we've got another of these negative feedback things. And this is another um, posterior pituitary hormone. So we've now got ADH from the posterior pituitary and oxytocin. So it is a weird thing, but during childbirth, uh, at the beginning, the posterior pituitary releases oxytocin, which causes some contractions. The more oxytocin you release, uh, the more the contractions are, and it kind of it builds up throughout that first sort of first stage of childbirth the oxytocin causes increasing contractions which cause increased oxytocin release blah 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 um, after birth obviously you're going to be needing to produce milk to feed your infant mammal and prolactin is the hormone in charge of that so this is going to uh, trigger milk production. So really towards, in the sort of lead up towards childbirth, we're going to get the release of prolactin. 
to start the mammary glands producing milk. Now, um, there are sort of the ducts that go from the milk glands to the nipple, and these two hormones act together in what's called a sort of letdown reflex. Um, so prolactin is needed to make the milk, and oxytocin is needed to release it. So actually, you know, babies don't suck milk out of their mothers. Their mother squirts milk into their mouths, um, which is quite an interesting thing. So that kind of, that's it for HCG, oxytocin, prolactin. Again, I'm thinking, you know, ways of learning it, potentially doing a table with, you know, when it's released, what it does, and anything about the negative feedback systems. Good luck with learning that.